Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show, it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of Hightown. A great season finale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, we are dealing with the aftermath of Frankie's arrest. And once again, Jackie's on high. Like, everything's good. Everything's fantastic. Their, their unit's looking like they're awesome. They're amazing. And, you know, obviously the Jackie and Leslie thing. It's like, oh, let's go out for drinks. You're like, oh, this is probably not going in well. But then Leslie says what I kind of was bringing up a couple episodes ago, thinking maybe Leslie did just kind of push her away because she did get scared. Because I think Jackie had suggested that at one point in time. And Leslie's like, yeah, that was it. I mean, hell, I'm like 35. I was married. And now what am I, gay? And it's like, for her, she was like, it's kind of thrown. It's like, well, I don't think that, I mean, but I mean, you know, like, but regardless, it's just like, the fact is that she was like, yeah, I'm kind of confused with everything. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but I think maybe this is indicative of stuff. Once again, Jackie runs into it. It's like, oh, hey, Doc. I, hey, it's me, Jackie Conona. It's, it's like, right. I'm doing good. And it's like, oh, actually, I normally don't talk to patients outside of like work hours. But I'm glad to see you're doing so well. I guess first and foremost, it's like she was so dismissive. But I guess it's also because and her dismissiveness, like... I don't know, because I feel like as an addict, you would know that she would need, like, the... Jackie needs the reassurances, the uh, uh, reconfirmation, and like, oh, no, good job, like, you know, like, pep her up. But in that moment, I think it's just like, oh, like, she didn't really care because I guess on some level, maybe Jackie was like, she can tell. Because she's like, oh, I'm staying sober. It's like, yeah, like... But obviously, Jackie didn't go too much into detail. So like, right, I've fallen off the wagon recently, and now, now I'm pulling myself back up. But sadly, I think talking to her, because she's like, right, do you ever feel like you're a fraud, like you're a piece of shit, and, uh, Leslie was like, no, and I was like, of course, she's like, of course you haven't, but I think in that moment, she's like, right, she kind of felt like a fraud in front of her, because it's like, right, you you can kind of, she kind of felt like the lady could smell her bullshit, then her and Leslie do her thing, and I was like, oh, this is gonna be awkward, I mean, you already saw where things kind of led last time, Jackie, like, oh, I was like, I was like, oh, this ain't gonna work out, even then, I was like, I hope, I'm hoping for the best, but it's like, I don't think it's gonna work out. And ultimately, it doesn't. That's the sad thing of, like, Jackie was on top of the world, but the higher the high, the lower the lows. And it's just like, Jackie's been on... I mean, to be fair, the entirety of season one, she was on a roller coaster. She was... Uh, I think the time between season one and season two is the longest we've seen her sober. Like, the sad thing is she was doing so well. But once again, she's not dealing with the root problem. She's just finding temporary solutions. Because she even admitted it to herself. Her new obsession. First it was Leslie, then it was her job. And now, you know, literally both of those get fucked and, like, go to smoke. Because Alan ordered them to take Charmaine to drop her off to try and pump her for information on the way. Doesn't work because Charmaine's no snitch. And she's like, oh, I got my period. I need you guys to pull over so I can put in a tampon. In the process, she gets away. Leslie, like, fractures, like, messes up her ankle on a rock. Jackie chases after her but loses her. And then the moment she gets brought in front of Smith, I was like, all right. It's like, right. He's yelling at him. Also, he he's definitely on some sexy shit. Like, holy crap. Being like, yeah, shouldn't have known leaving up the two women. Jackie's almost looking at him like, what the fuck did you just say? That's some fucked up shit to say. Like, I feel like that's an HR situation, like, screaming to happen. And I was like, man, like, that was just, I'm like, out of nowhere, just like, oh, two women. I was like, man, that's some misogynistic shit that just dropped so casually. But then Jackie's like, okay, sir. And the moment Leslie's standing there, she's like, I got something to say. I was like, oh, boy. I was like, here we go. Here we go. At first, she was kind of saying, like, right, I didn't agree with this plan to begin with. This is actually Alan's plan. It's like, okay. I was like, all right, you're throwing Alan under the bus. And she's like, next. I was like, oh boy, here we go, here we go. And she immediately throws Jackie under her bus. Jackie's like, what the fuck are you doing? She's like, hey, Jackie, uh, like, I didn't appreciate her, like, her, um, she basically didn't do what she was supposed to. She's the one that let this happen in the first place. And rather than continuing to chase after Charmaine, she checked on me, which I'm like, which is bullshit because she checked on you because you're her partner. So there's that. But it is like, right, she's also, the reason why she's a part of this unit in the first place is because of Ray in your life. And then Jackie's like, what the fuck was that? She's like, it's my career. And I'm like, yo, once again, I guess we have to go back to it that Ray literally warned you not to get mixed up with. And that's the sad thing too because it's like, 
Make up your mind, Leslie. You in or you out? Like, come on. Like, to do that, to be fair, like, it, I guess it just shows you who Leslie is at her core of life. I'm going to throw you under the bus if it benefits me. Because, hell, even she tried to apologize. I was like, Ray, like, no hard feelings, right? He was like, yeah, sure. You know, it's like, if it means protecting herself, like, she protected the unit by throwing Ray under the bus last se season. That's the, the whole Renee thing. But she leaned into it because, like, right, the whole thing between her and Ray kind of screwed her career, too. Screwed up her marriage, kind of screwed up her life a little bit. So she, I think it's a little bit of getting payback, but also making sure that, like, the unit wasn't affected. Because the unit getting affected meant it would affect her job. So, that's so messed up. First, you leave her high and you leave... Uh, her high and dry, you're like, oh, this is too much. Then you squirm your way back in your heart. I was like, nah, I'm sorry, Leslie. I'm sorry. And I feel so bad for the actress who plays um, Leslie. I think her name's Tanya Glaze uh, or Glanz. And I'm like, I feel so bad for her. But I'm like, I'm very like, man, hashtag fuck Leslie, dude. Oh, that sucks. Especially because Jackie got so hyped up. It's like, yo, like, Ray's got his retirement party, and Jackie's going to bring, like, oh, I'm going to bring my girl. It's like, once again, she even said, like, oh, I can be too much. I can go a little too fast. And it's like, sadly, she went down that route again because Leslie is the worst to you. And once again, Leslie's just the worst in general. Once again, it's like, I, I, I backed down. I was like, all right, maybe Leslie's not as bad. It's like, it sucks what she did, but no. It's like, no, nah, once again, you're my fuck you list, Leslie. Once again, nothing to the actress. We're talking purely to character. I don't want it to be that situation where, like, oh, the fuck you's bleed over to the actress. No, she's just doing an amazing job at, at playing a character that kind of sucks, you know? That's always a complicated thing of, like, when you play a character and you're so good at it, people will, for whatever reason, blur the lines. I'm like, no, the character sucks in the sense of, like, but for drama purposes, she has to suck because it, like, leans into, like, once again, Jackie's issues that she's not dealing with. I mean, hell, I love it because I figured this season finale wasn't like I said it at the beginning. I was like, this ain't going to be a happy ending of a season finale. Like I had a feeling when we get to the end of this season, it wasn't going to be happy. Said it a couple episodes back. Lo and behold, here we are. Nobody's happy. Boy, oh boy, Ray gets his job back. But it's like, right, you kind of got to fix that woman situation. So he convinces Renee to recant her statement. And she does. Puts on the waterworks and everything. So I was like, right, I thought my life was threatened. I was threatened by uh, Frankie. He also threatened my son, and she starts crying. And the ADA or whatever is looking at her almost like, wow, look at you putting on this performance. Because she didn't buy it for a second. But it worked out. Ray ended up getting his job back. To be fair, this is also after Renee uh, gave Frankie the boot. And she was like, yeah, like, I'm, I'm just, I want here to say sorry. But he's like, oh, you think? You think you'll be with him? The moment he gets his job back, he's kicking you to the street. He's calling her the C word. He's calling her a whore. It's like, yeah, this is the woman you love. This is your baby mama until you found out she betrayed you. Plus, yeah, at this point in time, I think he had a good enough idea of what she did that she's doing to kill Jorge. Or maybe the line of her being like, you don't act like I, I'm a lot. I'm capable of a lot more than you're aware of, essentially. It was kind of, I'm paraphrasing, but that was basically what she was saying. I think in that moment, it might be when Frankie figured out, like, oh, you're the one that killed my primo, you know? Yeah, it, but it's like, yeah, you could tell the moment uh, she talked to, tried to talk to Ray and be like, yeah, uh, there's something I got to tell you. It's like, because she's like, oh, would you ever want to have kids? He's like, oh, yeah, family running around. He's like, yeah, but I'm going to need to be financially stable. And so she was like, all right, all right, so... And that moment, she kind of felt, I think she was leaning to feel a little bit like Frankie was saying she would, like, oh, he's going to use you. But I think at the end of the day, Renee is going to use this to her advantage. Now, what's interesting, though, is they brought it up during that whole thing when she was helping Ray get his job back. She has immunity from a lot of stuff, so none of that could blow back on her for lying and stuff like that. But I think it is at the end of the day, just like Ray was kind of using her, there is something there, but it's also like, right, they both are using each other because she's used, I mean, Ray was kind of using her like well in advance, but then I think he got caught up in it because much like Jackie has her addictions, he has his vices too, and his vice is Renee. But she's using him as protection because it's like, right, you have a cop for a baby daddy. That don't mean like, that means like he's going to protect you from Frankie or anyone that might come after you because of Frankie. So... It all works out, except Ray getting his job back screws Alan out. Alan gets to stay a sergeant, which is jacked up that, like, oh, not only does Ray get his job back, he gets his original position back like nothing went wrong. So, he ends up getting to do that. Um, Alan gets the boot, has to go to a different position, which, like, I love that Alan was like, you know what? 
fuck you, Ray. Like, the fact is, keep my desk warm for me, because eventually you're going to fuck this up, and I'm going to take it back. Like, but the fact is that working homicide, it's like you kind of have to make your cases. Like, so basically, it almost sounds like he's also saying, like, I won't be able to be home and stuff like that. Like, that's kind of almost a dead-end career and job, and it's just like what that job entails. And Ray's trying to be like, no, it's cool. It's like, yeah, I love it. He's trying to be like, calm down, bro. Yeah, you expect it. Because, like, you could have done this selfless thing. It's like, right, Alan doesn't have to transfer. I will. You know it's a shit job because you didn't you didn't offer to take the job instead and make it so that Alan could keep his current position. But also for Alan, it's like, I put in decades here. So fuck you, Ray, and fuck Smith. The fact is that I love, because he's a dick about it. He's like, oh, like, I don't care what magic he had to pull to do this. I want you to go tell Alan that he's out and you're in because we don't have enough of a budget. It's like, he did that on purpose too just because he knew what to stick it to Alan even deeper. But also, like, and I love that line from Alan. He's like, oh, this sounding pretty white. And you're like, yo. It's like, yeah, you just come back. Everything's forgiven. You're the one that fucked up. I've been good. I've been killing my job. I've been doing the best I can. You did all this. You put the the our unit in a bad spotlight, and you get to come back and get to take my job? Fuck that. It's like, yo. Once again, pro, uh, props to that actor, Alan. Dude, Alan stays angry in this show, especially because he had his, like, he had his talk with Osito. It's like, oh, I'm going to make sure your ass get back put in jail. And Osito's kind of looking at him like, but then he popped, like, he's like, nah, I'm good. He's like, yeah, you better watch your back. He's like, oh, is that a threat? It's like, um, fuck with me and find out. I was like, yo. Because it didn't even click in my head. Like, obviously, Osito tried to get, like, you know, um, the cops didn't hold up their end of the bargain, so he wasn't able to get out. And other security guards like, yo, you need protection? And yeah, he's like, yeah, you help me out, I'll help you. And the guy laughs out. He's like, oh, like, I'm going to get on the wrong side of Frankie Cuevas? Like, nah, fuck you, bro. And just leaves Osito to his, uh, his own vices. I'm like, damn, son. But luckily, it all worked out because uh, at first, like I said, it didn't click in my head. I was like, who paid his million-dollar bills? Like, it couldn't be Janelle. But then it's not till him and Janelle were together in bed. I was like... Right, the New York connect with Charmaine out of the picture. She probably talked about Osito anyway, or at least the New York connect is aware of their connection. And so, like Osito's filling in that void that she's. When the moment she got, the moment she got arrested, they're like, "All right, we're gonna get Osito because I guess he holds it down enough." So it's kind of interesting because Charmaine is kind of tossed to the wind. Because we do see her at the end of the episode and she's just randomly getting picked up. So like, where do you go? Like, people are going to be looking for you. There's going to be warrants out for your arrest. You're going to have to disappear. New York is probably not going to help you. I mean, Ralphie's got a soft spot for Charmaine, but this is basically his uncle's game. So his uncle probably determines a lot of that. So it's like, oh, you're going to stay away from that girl. You're not going to help that girl because she is a threat to our business. She didn't say anything. So that should mean something. So maybe they'll be willing to help but i think she's too much of a risk i hope it doesn't turn into a thing where osito gets orders like they're like cool you want to be down about this you want to be in our business you have to kill that loose end that charmaine like he might have to betray her because he did get um Vern to kind of run things but he's like oh if you want the crown and stuff like that you want this like to run things on your own make it your own get whatever you want get whatever woman you want you're gonna do something I was like oh sounds like he's asking you to kill Frankie it's like yeah he's asking you to put yourself in that position which we see our boy Vern puts into work later on now whether Frankie sh I mean he's bleeding out he got shanked whether he's actually dead who knows but that wasn't before he implanted the idea in Ray like yeah uh, like, oh, the fact of the matter is you and me, he's like, I don't even blame you, Ray. You and me fell for the wrong woman. Like, we both fell in love with the, like, the fact that she manipulated us and used this. Like, yeah, killing my cousin. He's like, even I was like, even I was kind of like, she used my own gun. The gun I got to protect her, use that to kill my cousin. He's like, yo, I'm actually surprised by what, and Ray's like, wait, what are you talking about? It's like, yo. So Ray does some investigating on his own because he had asked, um, he had asked, uh, Jackie about it. Jackie was like, yeah, the whole thing didn't sit well about Frankie being the one because, uh, was it Chulo that said, like, right, Daisy and, um, pilot dude, it's like, yeah, those were 100% Frankie, but he swore up and down that Frankie had nothing to do with 
with Jorge's death, so that solidifies it. Plus, he does some investigating of his own. He finds out about the shell casing that was used was a 38. He went to check out like one of the places she went because he was tracking her for a while. So he finds out where she was. He's like, "Hey, do you remember her?" She looked over. He's like, "Yeah, you remember a woman like her coming in here?" Plus, she also bought a 38. Like this is a candy shop. You can kind of get whatever you want. So it's like, cool, 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 cool. Solidifies the fact that she, she killed Jorge. So. Ray is asking her, like, oh, do you have anything to tell me? And this is something I'd brought up earlier in the season. I wasn't sure which way it was going to go. That if Ray found out she killed Jorge, would she protect him? Because, yes, she killed somebody, but it's Jorge. So, is that as bad? Granted, yes, it was an accident, but it stopped being an accident the moment she, like, covered up the crime, you know? So, but the moment, like, she's like... Right, you, I have something to tell you. The moment she's thinking about Jorge's death, I'm like, you're going to drop the pregnant car. You've been sitting on it for a while. And they're like, because I kept saying over and over again, when is she going to drop the pregnant card? Because that's going to be the interesting moment under what context. And she drops it under this context. He's like, whoa, you're pregnant. How long have you known? A few months. All right, a few months. She's like, yeah, I'm trying to wait to figure out the Frankie thing. Was it his or mine? She's like, it's yours, asshole. He's like, yes, I'm being a dick, but I just had to ask. And so... Ray's so caught up in that moment, he's kind of like, yeah, like, oh my god, we're going to have a baby, and I'm so happy, and stuff like that. Because I think, for one, his son, Nikki, hates his guts. Especially, like, yeah, they, they had their issues before, but then, like, oh, we, oh, almost seemed like everything was okay. Oh, turned around, and he hates your guts. Stay away from me. Stay away from mom. So, he has a second chance to make things right. But there's still the thing of, yeah, you killed Jorge. Now the question is, is Ray going to let that go? Or is he, what's he going to do? Um, especially because it's like, he knows Renee kind of might have a feeling that he knows, but she doesn't know for sure. But it's also like, I'm carrying the guilt because it's like, right, I'm with a cop because he can protect me. But if I tell him the truth, how do I guarantee that he won't, even though he knows I'm pregnant, maybe he'll wait till I give birth because maybe he doesn't want his daughter growing, like being born in prison. But didn't I watch something recently where someone, I don't know if it was a, was it a TV show I was watching recently where someone talked about being born in a prison? Or is that real life? I don't remember. I'm, I'm blurring the lines now between real life and TV because I'm like, something and someone re I remember watching recently referenced being born in a prison. I don't remember if that was a real person or was that a TV show thing. I can't remember. Re regardless, I don't know if that's going to be the thing of he's going to wait for the full, like, uh, baby to come to term and be born and then bust her or not. Because the problem is, the whole thing is like, oh, you're supposed to be keeping your nose clean. If the truth comes out about Renee and how tight-knit you are, then it's going to, like, uh, torpedo your situation again, which Alan just got the call. This guy is like, oh, like, getting big trouble. He heard he was about to get in trouble. So he talks about these Jamaican cleaners who told him about disposing of a body, and you're like, okay. So Alan's going to be on the case. He's going to eventually find these ladies because they supposedly went back to Jamaica. But I guess like maybe I don't know what the U.S. and Jamaica's uh, extradition like things are like. Are there like extradition laws or no? Um, if so, bring them back, question them about what they know and what they did. And that's going to tie back to Renee, because when it comes to them getting in trouble, the amount of money that they, paid, they got paid was uh, was enough to leave and go back to Jamaica. Not enough to go away for a long time because of Renee, so they're going to sell her out. Then I guess, once again, what is Ray going to do? Is he going to accept it, or is he going to go fight tooth and nail because he loves Renee? Or is it more so like, she's pregnant with my child, so I have to kind of go above and beyond? It just, it... She went from one relationship not of uh, with some complications of like because uh, Frankie never really stopped trusting her necessarily because that's why he didn't see the betrayal coming. Uh, to be fair, it wasn't a hundred percent on Renee. There were other contributing factors that was your downfall. In particular, Osito was your out downfall. But to be fair, Renee played her own role in everything as well. So. Speaking of Osito, things are looking up for Osito because he got the girl and he's uh, got the New York connect, which even Janelle was like, oh, what's that about? And he was like, do you really want to know? So she's like, I got to know what I'm getting mixed up into. So she's probably going to be Queen B to this, like very, very opposite of where like Frankie and where Frankie and Renee were at the beginning. Maybe they're going to be setting up the Osito and Janelle situation to be that potentially like she didn't want to get mixed up in this but now she is so we'll see 
I mean, Vern ended up killing Frankie, so but it could still be the thing of right. Uh, Vern could still be his inside guy and run things and everything be in his control because if osito has got the hookup and stuff. Once again, depends on if Frankie's actually dead or not. Then you have Jackie showing up at Ed's party. I was hoping she wouldn't bail because it'd be like, nah, don't do that because that would suck. But like, she's keeping up like a strong face. She's like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm good. I don't want to talk about it. This is about your time. And as they're dancing and stuff, she's like, Can, like, don't retire. Like, I want to be back on a boat with you. And he's like, kid, you can't go back in time. Like, what's done is that like, you can't ever go back home. And she's like, yeah, I just want things to be back where they were. But it's like, they can't be. You know, so Ed's just kind of like, yeah, I'm a, I got to call Linda. I told her I would. And I think he was walking away because it's like, right, you say that now after you say it. It's just, once again, he he's always there having to pick up the pieces because Jackie's like, no, no, we'll wait till tomorrow for me to, like, uh, talk your ear off about all my issues. And so home dude, what's his name, Ron? Like, yo, like, let's go drink. And he gets her started and she's spiraling. So she calls up Ray. He's like, hey, hey, you just go home and you go inside. She's like, just go inside. He's like, yeah, because she's like, I fucked up. Everything's fucked. He's like, just go home and we'll talk tomorrow. And lo and behold, her dad's uh, dude, uh, Drug Connect, she goes to him. I was like, no, Jackie. And she's like, yeah, just whatever. Just let me in. I'm like, oh, dude, don't don't say that. And Oh, this is heartbreaking, dude. Once again, you thought Jackie hit. Once again. Until Jackie deals with what's at the heart of this, which there's a lot of dad issues, you know, I know that's the stereotype, but her dad has a lot of issues that are translated over to her. So it's just like why she like, I guess, like not getting any love for her dad is what made her like kind of seek love for people and stuff like that. Like, I mean, it's almost like when you look and think about it, it's like she kind of has no good people in her corner. Leslie's the situation that it is. Ray's an asshole himself, but, like, they're friends, so she lost Junior, so she doesn't have him to kind of balance her out, kind of keep her on a straight narrow, especially how he ended up going, which I think is going to be, I think, because I, I didn't expect things to play out this way, because I thought home dude that she was going to get drugs from now at the end, I thought he was going to use that to his advantage, be like, yo, oh, and screw Jackie over, like, blackmail her or screw her out of her job. To be fair, she's potentially in a situation to lose her job anyway so that's why she's throwing caution to the wind who cares like when you hear her in her car like the way she hit the curb you hear a whole bunch of rattling it seems like she would harden the paint there jackie kind of got all that she wanted and now it basically blew up in her face but she doesn't have the tools necessary to handle that without going on a bender or going off the edge like she did so once again she's got to do some a lot of work potentially in the future to like fix all of this you know, because, like, it's going forward, like, once again, does she keep her job? Does Leslie keep her job? Because even Leslie's like, oh, if I have my job tomorrow, I'm going to put in for a new partner. And it's like, so, and, and if they both manage to keep their jobs, what's going to happen then? Like, what's that dynamic going to be like? Because the fact is, Ray being in the position he's in, because he's in a very, like, ah, oh, fuck Leslie, I don't care. Like, Smith is going to have some say in that, but Ray's going to definitely look out for Jackie. And that's not going to be good for, um... For Leslie, because even she was like, oh, we're good, right? And Ray was like, yeah, sure. He's like, no, we're not. It is December 26th at the time we recorded this, and it still has not been confirmed whether or not uh, Stars is renewing Hightown for a third season. I hope it is, because with uh, where we left things off, and there's still so much left. Um crazy ass cliffhanger to leave it on but I I, because I'd love to see where a season uh three would take us with all of this obviously where Jackie's story would take her next um is this rock bottom but I think that's an important thing to know even rock bottom isn't a clear uh isn't a guarantee that you will get sober you know I think it has to come from other places so maybe Ray can point her in the right direction once again Ray's kind of dealing with his own situation so especially if Alan has his way especially if he knows not only can he screw Renee over which can benefit him he could also screw Ray over in the process so that's probably going to lead to those two butting heads a lot as like uh, Ray's probably going to have, if he decides to protect Renee, he's probably going to do everything he can as a cop to try and cover up her crimes and stuff like that. So I'm also curious are we going to circle back to the club or anything, you know, that was Frankie and Renee's like, what happens to that now? Uh, Donna was working there while she was going to school. So what's going to happen on that front? 
we've we got slightly introduced to the New York Connect through Ralphie, but like who actually will the New York Connect be? So many questions. Like I said, I hope the show gets a third season because I'd love to see where all this would take us going forward. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.